Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to continue with another just-in-time review session, and we're going to look at problem solving and rates of change. Now, throughout this term in calculus, we're going to be solving a lot of problems. And we will find that on occasion, in fact, many occasions, we'll get stuck. We'll read the question and we're just like, I don't know how to proceed. What do I do? What is the question asking? I'm not sure what to do at this point. And then you might start to freeze up, not know what to do from there. So what we want to do in this section is to just lay down a ground plan, a few steps that form the basis of a good approach to solving problems. And these steps are laid out by mathematician, uh, author, and teacher George Polya. And this is known as Polya's four-step approach to problem solving. So here are the four steps. First step, define the problem. What does that mean? Well, it means understand the problem. Understand the problem. What is it asking? Do you know what the problem's even asking for? Do you know what you're supposed to even look for as a solution? What are you given? What do you want to find? These are the kinds of things involved in understanding the problem, or what he called defining the problem. Now, in order to understand the problem, that may involve rereading the question multiple times over and thinking to yourself, Okay, I think I know what it's asking. Let me read it again one more time just to make sure. And then once you figure out that you think you have a good understanding of what the problem's asking for, then devise a plan for solving the problem. Come up with some sort of strategy that's going to help in solving the problem. These together we can think of as our investigation phase. So this is about how to investigate the problem and a possibility for solving the problem. Now once we've got a plan for solving the problem, then we go ahead and carry out that plan. So this is where the bulk of the work tends to happen, carrying out the plan. That's where all the little details are going to come into play and we're going to be doing lots of calculations. And once we've carried out our plan, then we go ahead and test and evaluate our results. So this is a part of the argument phase. So we investigate, we think we have a good understanding of the problem and how to solve it, then we go ahead and carry out the details and then test and evaluate our results. And that's our argument phase, that's where all the little details come into play. You can think of this as the stage where you work through all of the details and so if you're trying to convince someone that your answer is correct, you would appeal to the plan that you carried out and your evaluation of results in your argument that you've got the correct answer. So that's why I refer to this as sort of your argument phase. This is what you use to convince someone else that your answer is correct. So let's look at these four steps in the context of an actual problem. So I'll leave the four steps visible up top. So here we've got a 10-foot wall and it stands five feet from a building. So this is a problem that we've seen before, at least the setup here. 10-foot wall, five feet from a building. We've got a ladder so that it leans against the building, touches the top of the wall, and then also touches the ground. How much does the length of the ladder need to be adjusted by if the distance from the base of the ladder to the wall increases from five feet to seven feet? So the base of the ladder to the wall is given by this variable x in our diagram. We want to know how much the length changes by if x increases. So this, what I'm verbalizing here is essentially our understanding of the problem, or that first step, defining the problem. So let's get a visual for this. So we've got our ladder. The base is, in this picture here, it's seven feet from the wall, but that can change. We can see that as the distance from the base of the ladder to the wall changes, notice the length of the ladder is changing. So the length of the ladder changes depending on where the base is. So this is the key to understanding the problem. We're interested in how the length changes when its distance moves from five feet to seven feet from the wall. So oftentimes you wouldn't write down steps A and B, defining the problem and devising a plan. Well, often you, sometimes you def you'd write down your, your plan for solving the problem and it would sort of be in point form and you'd do the calculations intermixed with your plan. Um, but typically you wouldn't write down 
a statement about how you understand the problem. That would be internalized. That would be your, your own internal thoughts. But we're going to write it down here just so we can make the connection with these four steps. So how do we understand the problem? Well, this is what we've got. As the distance from the base of the ladder to the wall, which we've called x, changes, the height of the ladder up the wall which we called y changes. So this is a part of understanding the problem. We know that as x changes, y changes. Also, the length of the ladder which we've called L, changes. So these three variables in our diagram, as the x variable changes, so do the y and the L. We would like to find the length of the ladder when x equals 5 and x equals 7 and determine the difference of these lengths. Okay, that's our understanding of the problem. Let's go ahead and devise a plan for solving the problem. So how do we come up with a plan to solve this problem? Well, we notice that L changes as X changes. So L is a function of X. We're going to use geometry to find an expression for L in terms of X. Once we've got this expression for L in terms of X, then we just have to evaluate. So, use geometry to find an expression for L in terms of X, then compute L of 7 minus L of 5. So there's our plan. The next step in our approach to problem solving is to now carry out this plan. So let's go ahead and try to find an expression for L in terms of X. So we look at our diagram and we're going to use geometry as indicated by the statement of what our plan is. So what relationships do we have? Well, there's this big triangle, which we've got here, and what do we know about that big triangle? Well, we know that it's a right triangle, so we have a relationship between its sides. So, by the Pythagorean theorem, so by Pythagoras, we have L squared is equal to 5 plus X all squared plus Y squared. Okay. Also, by similar triangles, we have so what do we have by similar triangles? Well, we have this big right triangle. We also have this smaller right triangle here. 
So those are similar triangles. And what we have is that the height over the base of the small triangle is equal to the height over the base of the big triangle. And so that means that y is equal to 10 over x times 5 plus x. Now we can take our expression for L in terms of x and y and write it entirely in terms of x. So L squared is equal to 5 plus x all squared plus 10 over x times 5 plus x all squared. And so there's an expression for L squared in terms of x. We can do a little bit of simplification here. 5 plus x squared can come out of each one. That leaves me with a 1 plus a 100 over x squared. I can also factor an x squared of each thing, out of each thing, each term here. And then when I join the x squared with the 5 plus x, I can put the square outside of both. So this becomes then an x squared plus 100. And now at this stage, this is an expression for L squared in terms of x. So what that means is that L is the square root of this thing, the positive square root, because L is a positive quantity. So square root of the x squared, that becomes just a 5 plus x over x. And that's times a square root of x squared plus 100. So there is our expression for L in terms of x. And if we continue using what we stated as our plan, then we need to compute L of 7 minus L of 5. So then what's L of 7 minus L of 5? So L of 7 would be 12 sevenths root 149 minus L of 5 is 10 fifths times root 125. And this is approximately negative 1.435 feet. And so we have that, hence, the ladder needs to be what? Well, what I've got here is the length at x equals 7 minus the length at x equals 5 is negative. So that means the length when x equals 5 is bigger than the length at 7. So as we move our base from 5 to 7, we move it from a longer length to a shorter length. So the length of the ladder needs to be shortened by 1.435 feet. So we've carried out our plan. Now there's this last stage here, the testing and evaluation of results. Now this is often a step that is forgotten. One, gets, one usually gets to this point and says, okay, I'm done. That was what the question asked for and I gave an answer. So the importance of that last step is to really look at your final answer and your solution process as a whole and see if it made sense. Are, are we sure that this is the right answer? Is there another way to sort of test the correctness of this answer? So in part D, we can do things like You know, you can think, well, what does our length function look like? Well, L, as x goes to 0, as x gets really small, looks like this thing is blowing up. So it's heading up there like that. But as L goes off, or sorry, as x goes off to infinity, as x gets really big, this is going off to infinity, so it's got to come down, but then it's got to head off like that. So it probably looks something like this. We're interested in what happens as you move from 5 to 7. Well, we know that the length of the ladder was longer at 5 than it is at 7. So it's 5 is probably somewhere around here. 7 is probably somewhere around here. And what we worked out was the drop here and the drop was about 1.435 feet. That's how much it dropped. Okay, so we could use a graph to sort of see that we are in the right ballpark. That helps us test whether our solution is correct. Um, if it so happens that there was 
some sort of dynamic construction that you could do for it. You could also test that you're in the right ballpark here. So there is our, let's back it up here. So there's our length at 5, 22.36 roughly. Length at 7 is 20.92. So the difference is roughly about 1.4. So that again adds some credibility to the fact that our answer is correct. So in that testing and evaluation of results phase, there's really no one size fits all. There's no one way to test and evaluate your results. The point there is to just look at your answer and think to yourself, does it make sense? Is there a way for me to check whether I'm in the right ballpark, whether my answer does seem reasonable? Go back and revisit your steps, make sure that everything looks all right. If you get after carrying out your plan and you go to test and evaluate your results. Let's say I got that the change in my ladder was 1 million feet. Then I'd be kind of skeptical that I got the right answer. Right? That would be a first indication. 1 million feet. That doesn't seem reasonable. So that would be a stage where you would say, well, I tested my results. It doesn't seem reasonable. What went wrong? So I have to go back and revisit each of these three steps. Did I carry out my plan correctly? Well, it looks like I did. Okay, was my plan even a good plan? I devised a plan for solving the problem. Maybe it wasn't a good plan. So I checked to see if it was a good plan. Oh yeah, it seems to be a good plan to solve the problem as I understood it. Oh, well maybe my understanding of the problem was incorrect. Go back and reread the problem. So there's, once you're at this test and evaluation phase of the results, that will determine whether you need to go back to a previous step and reiterate the process. And it's often going to happen that you understand the problem, you devise a plan for solving it, you carry out your plan, you go to test and oh it doesn't look right. So go back and do the process again. And you may loop around a few times on this process and that's a part of problem solving. You never usually get it the first time out of the gate, but it's this iterative process of going back, rereading the question, trying a new plan. And it is easy to get frustrated when you're solving problems. Um, but just take a deep breath and realize that it's natural to have to go back and redo it again and again until you get to the stage where you're convinced by testing and evaluating your results that you've got the right answer. Alright, so that's it for this example. We're going to do a quick review now of rates of change.